we are that much closer to the mark than previously thought. Check this out. Headline. Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney said Catholicism is driving policy in the Trump administration. The article says that at the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday, Mulvaney said that principles of the Catholic faith are manifested within the Trump administration. The president has allowed us, Christians of all denominations, folks from all different faiths, to be very vocal about their faith. I'm comfortable as a Catholic, even though I work for a gentleman who is not Roman Catholic, that the principles of our faith are alive and well and well-respected in this administration and are driving many of our policies, Mulvaney said. That is something I am extraordinarily proud to be a part of. You do know students of prophecy have been warning about this coming to the USA for literally decades, well over 100 years, in fact. And have we not centuries-old proof in writing declaring this was Rome's agenda all along? And is it not prophesied that the U.S. government will emulate the Vatican's church and state conglomeration so as to bring about the long-prophesied religious laws? Thanks to every denomination, including the Seventh-day Adventist Church, already creating their images to the beast with their 501c3 contracts, with the second beast of Revelation, no less, the churches now have the political power to lobby for religious laws. And the One World Church, which has been officially formed as globally viable now across all so-called faiths, and this includes non-Christian religions as of February 4, 2019, is it any wonder Trump's administration would bow to the Pope to do that which Mulvaney is proud to be a part of? Now do you see why I stated back in the summer of 2016 that Trump's so-called war of words between him and the Pope was a political smokescreen to make it appear as if Trump's so-called religiosity was not going to be vulnerable to the man of sin in Rome? And directly after he was elected president, like every Vatican-controlled president before him, he and his Roman Catholic wife Melania met with the Pope and were all smiles on camera at that meeting. We are a lot closer to the mark being enforced than most Christians knew. And this includes the blinded Seventh-day Adventist people who remain in apostasy. Their leaders know what's going on, but they don't. The main reason they don't know this and the main reason they stay in apostasy is because all of them are wholly unaware that their leaders change the spirit of prophecy books so as to prevent certain warnings about their wicked plans being made known unto the people, and they removed the King James Bible from most of the churches, and they are now using the NIV, the Vatican-edited NIV. If you want to be used of God in the loud cry, you need to obey his written word about coming out of apostasy as it is declared in both Scripture and spirit of prophecy. And so get your hands on a King James Bible and the original unedited Spirit of Prophecy books from Sister Mary Beth at vbates.com. She's the only one I know of out there that has the original books that her dad collected since the 1950s. And her dad was Vern Bates. He's gone to rest now in the Lord. Once you get the King James Bible and the original writings, you will see what the remnant people who left the church to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes, you will see what the remnant people have been seeing for decades. And for those of you that don't believe the United States will become a church and state image of the beast in Rome so as to enforce the mark of the beast, since you ignore the fact that all the churches have already done this with their 501c3 contracts, because the only way to get the contract is to join your church with the state, perhaps these Vatican statements will change your mind. And as I read a few out of literally dozens of such quotes that I have listed here online, Think about why our political leaders are right now allowing millions of Roman Catholic voters to stream in through our open borders from other countries. Prophecy said this will happen, and now we see it happening right before our eyes. This first quote that I'm going to share is from General Lafayette. He was a general under President George Washington. He said that the liberties of the American people are ever destroyed. They will fall by the hand of the Roman Catholic cult's clergy. And then Archbishop Gilroy of the Catholic Church said, we must defeat all heretics, and he means anybody that's not Catholic. And so he says, we must defeat all heretics at the ballot box. Care must be taken that no suspicion may be raised when Roman Catholics 
are secretly given more government jobs than Protestants, Jews, and other heretics. And then from a priest named Hecker in the Catholic world of July 1870, it says there is ere long to be a state religion in this country, and that state religion is to be Roman Catholic. Number one, the Roman Catholic is to wield his vote for the purpose of securing Catholic ascendancy in this country. Number two, all legislation must be governed by the will of God, unerringly indicated by the Pope. Number three, education must be controlled by Catholic authorities, and under education, the opinions of the individual and the utterances of the press are included, and many opinions are to be forbidden by the secular arm under the authority of the church, even to war and bloodshed. And then another priest by the name of Talbot stated in the official Jesuit magazine for the U.S. in the New York Globe on December 14, 1930, he said, the old Protestant culture is about at the end of its rope. Why can't we make the U.S. Catholic in legislation, Catholic in justice, aims, and ideals? And then Cardinal Hayes gave his imprimatur, or declared, let it be written, in the state and the church on page 38 and 39 by Miller and Ryan, it says that constitutions can be changed, and non-Catholic sects may decline to such a point that the political proscription, or ban of them, may become feasible and expedient. And then he finishes by saying, what protection would they have against a Catholic state? See the boasting spirit of Satan here? And then Pope Leo XIII said, they, the Catholics, must penetrate wherever possible in the administration of civil affairs. All Catholics should do all in their power to cause the constitution of states and legislation to be modeled on the principles of the true church. And then, I don't know if you're aware of this, but during the Reagan administration, President Ronald Reagan, after much pressure, appointed an ambassador to Vatican City. And when asked why we need an ambassador in the Vatican, he replied, it would allow the USA to influence the political decisions of the Roman Catholic Church. Not only was that a lie in that it would be the Vatican influencing American policy instead, it was a violation of the First Amendment of our Constitution. Now do you see why the Seventh-day Adventist leaders defend, praise, and bow to the Pope? As prophesied in the Bible, as well as in the unedited Spirit of Prophecy books, They are now one with the man of sin in Rome, and the mark of the beast is that much closer to enforcement right here in America. Thank you for watching. God bless.